What's up guys, Shane your Figure 3D Printing, and today we're gonna to check out some PLA from Catalyst. So welcome back, as I said, we're checking out some PLA from Catalyst, who reached out to me via email, asked if I would like to try some of their filament. I said yes, of course. They sent me a bunch of different colors. I've actually used uh, most of this spool of red and the blue, I think I used all of it or a good portion of it. The roll is around here somewhere, I think. Can't remember what I did with it. But I did use some of it already and I wanna show you guys what it comes like with new in the box. And just let you know that I have already started printing with this, but we're gonna do some more prints. And the boxes are these very super cheap generic. This is a fairly cheap brand of filament, or I should say, I wanna say the quality's cheap because quality so far has been good, but we'll get to that later. But the overall, the presentation and how everything, they're going low cost with it. That's why they're using these smaller spools. I'm assuming these are cheaper, which is I've only ever seen these in cheaper filaments. And it is just, the bags are not the tightest seal. When it comes to vacuum sealing, there is a little bit of air in there, uh, but there are desk compacts in there at least. Uh, these don't, I guess a vacuum seal doesn't have to be terribly tight. I mean, once it's sealed, the silica pack takes up all the moisture it's in the bag. As long as it stays sealed, I don't really see a problem with it. Uh, again, you might feel differently, but that's just how I feel. Again, little desk pack, it comes out. And then they have super simple spools. Uh, the spools are sturdy for what they are. They are press fit and glued. The two halves go together. And here's just a little sticker. So we have the, this is Cadillac Direct Supply. The tolerance is plus or minus 0.05. So this again is gonna be a lower quality filament because of the tolerance. High quality filament is gonna be 0.02. I don't know if I've ever seen a 0.01 tolerance filament before, but 0.02, the next step is 0.03. And that is the general, I'd say the biggest section, or I guess the biggest variety of filament out there is gonna come in a plus or minus 0.3 millimeter variance in the diameter. So we definitely would need to check this one out, but as I said, I've been printing with it and I haven't had any issues so far, but I will do some checks on it just to be sure. And their printing temperature, they give you a pretty big range, 180 to 240. 240 is super duper hot for PLA, unless you're printing Maker, Maker's Geek. They're the only ones that I know that their PLA requires to be super duper hot. All the other ones, 205 at the absolute max, unless you're Printers cook in speed, 215, but either way, 200, 205 is usually pretty good. Now the color selection is really nice. They're blue, super duper blue. Again, I wish I could find that spool. Oh, it's connected to another printer under there. You guys can see it. Way down in there, it's connected to the cube. That's where that spool went, I was wondering. Now this yellow is kind of like a yellow orange. Again, the red is a pretty deep red. And then we have here a pretty neon green. Not terribly neon, but it's, it's pretty bright green. And then here we have an orange, which is almost like a blood orange. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, a little bit of red orange in there. But again, they're all exactly the same. These were all just sent to me off their shelf, which was nice. I'm not assuming these were any of these were cherry picked, anything like that. Needless to say, we have a lot of printing to do. I'll do a couple colors, a couple prints in each color, just so you guys can see how each one ends up showing up. If there's any differences between colors, Sometimes you have to tweak uh, your temperatures depending on the color. But I'll go over all that with all these different rolls. So let me get the print in and we'll be right back after some time lapses. Well, as you can see, left over the rolls, not much left. Uh, blue is practically gone, red is mostly there. I used about half the roll of the green. A good third or you know getting on half roll of the yellow and a good third of the roll of the orange so i did print a lot of things and i end up using a lot of this filament for some other testing that i'm doing for other things so for example this blue and these two orange vases are the make anything vase and they came out beautifully so what i ended up printing these on was the triangle labs deforce mini behind me using a smoothie board which i am learning how to calibrate and work on and there is something that you get out of smoothie boards with the DRV8825 drivers, which is called Salmon Skin. And this one right here actually showcases that. And I'll show you close up here in a minute. 
but this one actually showcases that salmon skin, and then these two are using TL smoothers. I'm doing a whole separate video, which I'm probably gonna record right after I finish this one, on just talking about TL smoothers and how they improve your prints with using those DRV8825 drivers. I also printed this vase in the yellow, obviously, on that same printer. Again, dialing it in, making sure that it's all set up. So I really used a lot of solvent for testing and for tuning things in. Of course, right here, I have a bunch of my maker coins and for some reason, I didn't print the blue or if I did, I can't find it. My son might've stolen it. Actually, I, I honestly, I looked everywhere and I couldn't find it anywhere at all. So I don't know what happened to that. But uh, surprise, surprise, these all came out great. And I, a few other things I printed, I'm gonna be doing some of these. These are little tic-tac-toe boards. And uh, the black is Folger Tech Black, like True Black PLA. And then all of the markers, so the circles and the X's are in various colors here that I have. I thought the blue and red look good together. Here I have green and yellow together. Again, I thought it was a nice combination of colors. Uh, they, they look really good off of, like, against the black. So I wanted something that looked really cool like that. Uh, another thing that I actually use a ton of this filament for are these. Now, these are the labyrinth boxes on Thingiverse. And what these do are, they're a little puzzle, and they are for putting a little prize in so that when you open it up, you then have something to get out of it. Now, I am not, have not practiced as much as my wife did, uh, but we're actually going to be taking these to a little maker fair at work. I think these would be kind of fun. I'm gonna make some people race when they open it up and there's a little dum-dum inside for them to have as a little victory, a little prize. So I think those would be really fun. I, I can't remember how to, she had done so many of them now, she now remembered how to do them all, but I do not. And now that I'm on camera, I'm nervous about getting it done in the proper fashion. I'm getting back to the beginning though. Uh, so yeah, so these actually turned out great. I printed, I would say, 95% of these on the D-Force Mini one at a time because the bed isn't totally flat on that. So I'm working on that. But otherwise, all these prints came out absolutely just gorgeous. Uh, some retraction on a few of the prints for some reason, but other than that, great prints. Uh, the filament did great. The one problem I did have with this filament, and it could be because I've had it for a while, but it hasn't been out of the spool that often, is breaking. It would break after letting it sit off the printer, off like not printing on the printer. It would break after, I'd say probably five or six hours. I would come down in the morning. I was down here this morning, finished the print last night, came down in the morning, was checking some things on the computer behind me, and all of a sudden, snap. And it startled me, and the filament snapped up onto the spool. I really wasn't expecting that. So again, it caught me off guard at seven o'clock in the morning. So that is one thing I did have with this. I did have that with a few other spools recently of other manufacturers, but there are some manufacturers that doesn't happen to at all. But I never, so that being said, I never had a break during a print. So make your own decision on that. Again, it never broke during a print. It was just because it was sitting there. It could be because the filament is getting older. I've had it for a few months now, have not printed with it. Uh, and then on the blue, I printed out these uh, calendar blocks. So they're just little blocks that have numbers all over them and you just turn it for each day and there's a little stand that goes with it. And then here you have all the month cubes. Again, these are just hollow cubes that have all the months on them so that you put the month under there, you put the date on top, and there you have a little calendar cube. So a little like desktop calendar, good for teachers, things like that. Uh, I might actually end up giving this to Chloe's teacher here uh, once I print a base for it. I just need to figure out what color I wanna do for the base, maybe like a, a gray, like a light gray base, something like that. But as I said, I printed these on literally every one of my printers. The Ender printed some, the G-Tech printed some, the FT5 printed some, the D-Force Mini printed some, the both of the CR10s printed some of this. So I printed on a lot of, oh, the Modern Price Like Mini also printed a bunch of these. So I printed out as many printers as I could just to make sure that it all, that it printed well on everything, and it did. On legit E3D, on clone E3D, on the MK8, MK10s, MK9s, on the weird CR10, their little weird extra hot end on there. Uh, different extruders, so the Titan extruders, standard extruders, um, some hodgepodge ones that I have, 3D printed extruders. I never had any jams. I never had any breaks mid print. Uh, didn't have any under extrusions. I printed out literally two dozen of these. So that's 48 parts, because these are two halves. So in all of those parts, never had an under extrusion part at all. 
I also used the red for a couple nutcrackers that I'm taking to the Maker Faire as well and because those are just awesome looking and the a couple of them I did in red a couple of them I did in blue that's where some of the blue went yes yeah, so some of this blue also went into some of the nutcracker chests that I had made uh, I also printed the blue to print out some giant Lego pieces that are on another project I have put away everything printed very very well I didn't have any issues if you I don't know if you can see from the from the distance but some of these are a little screwy on the top because I forgot to readjust the max height in my slicer for the D-Force Mini. So when it got to the top, it started just extruding over the layers again and just pushing it around. So I trimmed up most of that up, so that can be ignored. But other than that, I mean, I just, so I can't get over the quality of the, the D-Force Mini now that there's a smoothie board in there. And I can't get over the quality of prints that came out from literally every printer I have. So it is a very welcome change to see a whole bunch of different filament colors come in and every single one of them perform just beautifully. I mean, there was no, again, no issues at all in any of the different prints and I can't really argue with the results and the results are great. So I can't say the only real downside to this filament are these tiny spools. Again, I really, really don't like these tiny, tiny spools. It's probably better because there's less movement in the spool. I'm sure there's a reason why they're doing it. It might just be for the fact that it's cheaper. I don't know. I just don't like them because I actually have to print a totally different spool holder just to hold these on most of my printers. Now some of them are suspended above here using a piece of PVC pipe and some brackets. And now the problem with that is because there's little screws on the ends, I'm using some cap head screws in order to just hold it on so it doesn't fall off of the arms, is that no longer fits into these holes. I would have to take those screws off, put this on, put the screws back on. No, that's... No, that's just goofy. That's not gonna happen, not gonna do that. So I end up having to print this, uh, print a totally different mount for 2020 extrusion, which most of my printers have in order to use these, or I've been using the Lush, the very simple spool holder design. They sit on the ground, use four uh, 608ZZ bearings that these just sit in and then they just roll. It works like a charm, but I like having the spools mounted somewhere so they're up out of the way. I'm not worried about knocking them over because they are physically attached to the printer and out of my way. So I like it, I recommend it. Go ahead and pick some up if you need to get a bunch of filament at a good price that prints very consistently. Again, I didn't have any under extrusions. I didn't measure any of it, but the fact that I didn't have any under extrusions, I'm going to say it's pretty consistent filament. So you can go off it by that. And I don't remember exactly where they sell their products because they contacted me and sent this all to me. So I don't know exactly where they sell through, but I will put the links down below so that you guys can check them out. So if you guys liked the video, I hope you found it helpful. Whether or not you should buy some of this Catalyst PLA filament. And if it was helpful, give it a big thumbs up. If it didn't, thumbs down. Talk in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. If you want to see what comes out next time on my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon. Then you'll really know when something comes out because you'll get an email anytime I upload new content. And if you want to support me financially, right down below me is going to be a Patreon link. Go ahead, hit that. Donate me a dollar more, I greatly appreciate it. My current patrons, you guys are awesome as always. Again, if you donate me just a dollar, it goes a long way. 30 people donate a dollar, it goes a really long way. So I thank you guys for your support, for those that are out there. If you want to help me without directly donating to me, you can go use my fill links down below, Amazon, Makers Eat, all kinds of different ones down there. Update your bookmarks, do your daily shopping with those. I appreciate that, and if you do want to make an absolute just donation to me, you don't want to do the Patreon subscription thing, but you want to help me out, there's going to be Buy Me A Coffee and Stream Tips uh, links down below. You can donate me that way as well. The Buy Me A Coffee, I'm using that for actual parts that I'm trying to buy or gear I'm trying to buy. I'm trying to buy some new lights. So that is what the Buy Me A Coffee is going to. Anyways, I thank you guys for watching so much, and until next time, happy printing.